place to play. Where you can barely hear anything. Uh, tradition is rich there. Uh, they bring out their crowd 90 minutes before the game. So this is a very tough atmosphere, just like our place, but we'll be ready to play come Saturday. Kind of going into this year, after getting a win last year on the road, I know one thing Coach Beer talked about is obviously believing you can win when you get there. I guess what, what have you kind of told the guys about that sort of mindset? Um, honestly, that's the only takeaway from last year is the confidence, uh, believing that you can do something and making it happen. But it's a totally different year, totally different players, uh, different Kansas team. And same great opportunity, and we got to prove it on Saturday again. Kyle, I guess what have you kind of heard about Alan Phil Patterson on Saturday? Uh, I know the fans are electric. I mean, you can watch from TV to see that. And uh, I don't know, it's going to be a great atmosphere and uh, everybody wants to be. Just from your perspective, how do you feel your offensive game has kind of been more consistent or kind of been in the last couple of games for you? Uh, it's been consistent. I mean, I'm uh, starting to get shots more. But, uh, everybody's starting to pay back. Uh, Kyler, how has everything else been going for you this year, um, a couple months in? Or has the game kind of slowed down for you in this system and, and this team and your role with it? Oh, yeah, the game slowed down a lot. Because, uh, the more you watch film, you can see stuff, like mistakes. And, uh, the more you play, you get a better experience. <laughs> and, okay. and this is for uh, both of you guys. What have you really noticed uh, from Kansas that could be problematic to you guys, like matchup nightmare type of, type of deals? Or what has really stuck out to you about them? I guess we could start with Kyler if that works. Um, I mean, that transition offense is pretty good, so we got to make sure we keep getting back every, every opportunity. All right, they really push the pace. Uh, they have great guards that, that swing it, swing it, and they make you play the whole full, uh, the whole night you feet before. So you got to stay back, get back in transition. If you miss a shot, you got to run back. They're a really fast-paced team, always a good offense. So we, we have to be a ready guard. Coach, the, the players kind of touched on that. As far as you, you, know, you never want to, you don't want to ever look back too far, especially to last season, Robert, because these are two totally different teams. But where is the belief level at after going into the fog last year and winning whenever you're going there this year? Yes, I respect the question, but last year has nothing to do with this year. So, you know, as we build the program, we got to hope that we're not sitting around here talking about here we beat Kansas. You know, we intend to be a part of the fight every year. Now, more specifically, the last couple of games, obviously, you guys had the three-game lose streak, but now to get two wins in 48 hours over Arkansas and TCU, two tough teams here at home, where do you, how do you think the team is rolling right now compared to they were about a week ago? They were staying the course. I mean, uh, you find yourself in these close one-possession, two-possession games. You just try to play the game the right way. So, um, again, it's overplayed word choice, but it's uh, so true. You can't get too high. Uh, if you have won a couple games like we had recently, you can't get too low. Just like, uh, you know, less than a week ago, we were all thinking the world was going to end. And it's just like at this, at this level, you stay the course, you try to give yourself a chance each night. Are you guys using the, the shorter break, but, you know, about four days off or so to get back healthy and get your guys ready to go? Is there something extra this week with getting these days off? Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity. Whenever you play the big Monday game, and then you don't play again until Saturday. It's an extended stretch. Um, so yeah, you give the guys you know an extra day in terms of just resting, getting your bodies right. Um, you know we had a tough tough run. I think we played Wednesday, Saturday, Monday. That's tough, but there's no advantage or disadvantage because everybody in the league finds themselves in the same situations over the 18 game fight. So, um, but yeah, we, from a coaching standpoint, you'd love to have a couple extra days of practice. And Kansas obviously always has a lot of good players. DJ Lawson's been really big for them this year. What have you really seen from him that's been a catalyst for that team? Well, he's one of the best players in college basketball. Uh, he's a candidate for player of the year in RD, which makes you a player of the year candidate in college basketball. Um, he's got a great feel about the game. And uh, he's got a great IQ. He knows how to play basketball. And uh, it's very evident from the first time you watch him play. Uh, until every time you watch him play. So he's a real problem with his back to the basket. He's also a clutch three-point shooter in big moments. He wants to take those shots. He makes big ones, gets to the free throw line. Uh, you know, he averages three or more offensive rebounds a game. He's a double-double, walking double-double. So 
Uh, we don't have anybody on our roster that can guard him one-on-one, -on -one, nor, nor does I think anybody. It's all about team defense with him. What else about Kansas after uh, watching the film really stood out to you on the tape? Well, I think Coach Self's, you know, in the process of doing what he always does, and that's, uh, you know, making sure his team gets better over the course of the year, being a real factor as February blooms, uh, or we're in February now as March approaches. So just like every team, ours included, your team changes throughout the year, whether it be an injury, whether it be uh, a player stepping up and playing better and getting bigger minutes and Kansas has all these ingredients going on right now with their team, but um, we know what we're up against. We're playing against one of the historical programs that has a lot of pride and um, they're coming off after a loss, uh, which I hate. I'd much rather play them after their winning games uh, from a competitive standpoint. So we expect to get their best shot. Uh, we expect them to play their best game of the year. We know it's going to be an electric atmosphere at Allen Fieldhouse, so we're excited to have the opportunity to compete. Um, a couple of last few conference games, Matt was a little quieter and then the one against TCU, he had about a 18 points, I believe. What do you think the key was for him to uh, get going? Well, I think one thing, you know, at this level, you take what the game gives you. Every night's not going to be, you know, your night to be the leading scorer. And uh, Matt's an experienced veteran player. He knows this. Now, certainly, the more aggressive he is, the better he plays and the better our team is. And so, uh, but I think you know, more than anything, Matt takes what the game gives him. He's doing a great job for us. For Kansas, uh, with Gerald Vick, how much of an X factor is he, especially when he does shoot the ball pretty well and kind of drives the lanes? Yeah, I mean, I think he is a D factor, not the X factor. He, um, he's one of the best three point shooters in college basketball. He's an elite NBA athlete. He makes plays on both sides of the court, specifically on defense, with the ability to get steals and block shots with his quickness. He's a great open court player. I think he's the latest example of uh, Kansas's player development too. You know, last year maybe their third, fourth shooting option. This year maybe the best shooter in the league. So um, Kansas gets a lot of credit and a lot of uh, bub for their five-star recruiting and stuff like this. But their player development is some of the best in the country. Their guys get better. We saw that firsthand the last couple of years with four-year players like Graham and Mason. You know, and now we're seeing it with Vic. No, I just know about it, but how important can he be in this game, especially with the way he played last year, uh, along with Justin, who's obviously not here, but the way that Norris played, it seemed like he really kind of put you guys over the top there. Yeah, my belief and confidence and uh, vision of Norris really transcends who we're playing. I mean, simply stated, Norris is one of our best players. And uh, when Norris plays well, you know, our team uh, is better. And so it's not just about one thing for Norris. I mean, he's our best rebounder per minute play. He's um, a capable scorer and a big jump shot facing the basket last game. He's expanding his game. So, um, yeah, we need Norris to play well because we're playing another Big 12 team on the road. But more importantly than the, than the, than the opponent is just the fact that Norris is one of our best players. As he continues to find more consistency this senior season, you know, our team will only improve. I just want to a quick update. Uh, there was a report that said y'all got a Russian national team player, uh, Andre, I believe. I can't say his last name because he's you know, that can. But uh, do you have an update on him and what his status is? Can you try to say his last name? Just say Osikowski last year. Yeah, we, uh, Dre's a part of our team now. He'll be at practice today. So he's uh, started classes this semester. And, um, just like every guy on our roster, we're really glad he's here. He's got a huge upside. Looking back on the tape for the TCU game, I guess how would you assess your team's performance regarding like ball security? Uh, it was one of our better games, low turnover game. I think we had seven or eight turnovers in the game. And uh, I thought the guys did a better job of using the dribble instead of just pounding the ball. And it was obviously one of our best passing games. We had 20-something assists on our 32 baskets. So. I think our ball handling, ball security, your word choice was, was good against TCU. And uh, scouting Kansas, uh, I guess, how how have they looked uh, regarding like, causing turnovers and stuff like that? Well, they're always one of the most aggressive defenses uh, in the conference. It just starts with their talent, their athleticism, speed. Um, and certainly, Coach Self does a great job you know, changing defenses. Um, a little triangle, too, against Kentucky. Played some zone against Texas. They played zone against us last year. They press 
uh, throughout the game, especially late game. And then with their defense, they just have interchangeable parts. So you see some switch, some no switch. Mix up their pick and roll coverages. Uh, I could write a book on Bill Self's coaching. So any other questions about the way Kansas plays? I'm not an expert, but pretty damn close. Kansas is second in the Big 12 in uh, field goal percentage and in uh, points scored. How can you prepare the defense and try and stop them from scoring so much? Yeah, one thing against Kansas, uh, your, your offense has to help your defense. It's all about pace. So if you come down and take quick shots or questionable shots or turn the ball over or get your shot blocked or do things outside of the offense, then you're just fueling their fast break. So defense for us starts with our offense. Um, then in the, in, the, in the half court, there's just a lot of challenges, right? Because they got guys around the basket that you have to double, and they got perimeter players that can really shoot, you can't leave. Um, so it's just a real challenge. Um, but, you know, we have a good defense. We pride ourselves in that. And more than anything, this is an opportunity. I told the guys, you know, nothing to lose, kind of fighting, atmosphere, feeling in this game. You know, we're going to compete, and if we play well, we'll have a chance to win.